Hey, everybody. Just wanted to uh, say hello to you tonight. Um, we don't have Murph with us tonight. Uh, he's feeling a bit under the weather. And um, so he's just like, you know, down and out for the night. And that's okay. We're going to make it a draw stream. We're going to do some things with, uh, you know, just uh, with our characters. And, uh, you know, got a lot going on. My kid is pitching right now in a game and baseball. And so my wife's texting me. So you might hear some texts and vibrations in my phone going off. Whatever. Join in the chat. I'd love to hear from you. I hope we have some people watching tonight. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's hopefully going to be a good night. I'm just going to draw a little bit. And, um, you know, for me, it's a time to showcase some art. And I want to talk about the band. Um, the, the music that you hear at the beginning on that intro, uh, whenever you see the title card come up with Murph and Dirk, um, that is my band, uh, and it's called Ugly Tongue. And we've been together for probably, man, 30 years or more. Um, and it's been a long way coming, and we've had some really good music we're developing. Very proud of the music. And I think if you like that music at all, I would say look in the chat. I have a, a little link there. Go to ugly tongue at bandcamp.com or dot bandcamp.com. I'm sorry. And check us out. There's a link tree there at Bandcamp uh, that you can look at. And it'll take you into our Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube videos. Um, and it'll show you, it'll actually link you to some of the music we have that uh, we have recorded like a demo. And so good stuff. Um, very proud of my band, very proud of um, the guys that I play with, been playing with for a long time. And uh, that intro is by my guitarist, Josh Holt Schultz. I'm going to give him a shout out because it's a badass guitar intro. Um, not to mention everybody else in the band, Rich Goebel. Um, we got Donovan Goebel. And we have Ryan Bashong and me. And uh, so I was going to share some things, uh, just show you some of the artwork real quick for the band and uh, just let you see what we have. So this is... Um, this is what we got for the band. Uh, this is our banner. Got this on a couple shirts. Um, and so it's nice to be able to have some logos and some different stuff, but that's my art on there. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do all the art for the band, but it's fun to do some of it and have fun with this frog. So Ethan Van Skyver is not the only one with a goofy frog and uh, doing some fun stuff with it. Um, so... Let me see. Let me go on to some other art now. So um, what I wanted to do is just talk a little bit about my characters, too. Um, you know, with uh, with everything that we've been developing for this comic book for Ballad of the Celestials, um, we're the comic is pretty much done. I mean, it's it's pretty far. So whenever we get our campaign launched, we're going to be very far along. The only thing we really need to do is is get an editor. So if you're listening editors, we found out last night on Bancroft show that editors are the most important, right? <laughs> um, but we really want to get some editors on here, uh, get an editor at least, and, you know, help us tweak it, help us get it right. And then we're going to color it. And um, if we have to do a black and white, we'll do a black and white. But I think for the most part, we're wanting to get it out there and we are really wanting to, um, you know, put it in the hands of everybody and just see what they think. I mean, I'm excited to hear what people have to say, uh, which is another reason I, I want to showcase my art now. I want I want to be able to send it out. And I know Kevin's like, don't show your hand. Don't show our hand. I agree with him on a lot of points, um, which Kevin is Murph. Um, uh, but it's just the fact that I think the more we show, the more enticing it'll be. And I, and I'm not going to show everything, of course, because there's, you know, we got to leave some fun things in there for you, but 
we definitely want to show some good stuff. So I'm going to show some things now. Um, I'll show a page first. And then we're going to go to, I think, um, look at some characters in a little bit. Talk about them. Then I'm going to draw some. So, okay. That is not the page. There's the page. And this is... I think I might have shown this on another, like last week's stream maybe, but if I did, it was brief. Just kind of want to bring that in and show everybody. These are a couple characters you may not have seen much of yet. And this is uh, Sabra. He's the guy standing up um, in the second panel, not the first panel. He's the guy sitting down here in the, uh, in the first panel. And he is our our kind of ranger dash arrow <laughs> guy. Um, and he is part of the good guys, part of the initial crew of people that hang with our main character, Mayor. Um, the other guy you see is a mystery. Uh, his name is Shh. Oh, and that's all I'm going to tell you. Um, but the cool thing about him is because he's a mystery, uh, he's a lot of fun. And I love it. I love the mysterious. And the reason I fell in love with Wolverine was because he was mysterious. I didn't know about his past. I didn't know where he'd been. He could have been everywhere and he could have been nowhere. And that's what made it like, oh, man. And that just makes your imagination explode. And um, that's kind of what we want to do. We want to do that with this guy. He's not going to be fully, you know, told uh, in just a few comics, you're going to have to really get a lot of story from this guy. And even then, we don't know if we'll fully get um, to the bottom of his full story. And that's cool. We, we want to make it where we get to have fun and we get to do a lot of things um, with the character. And I'm hoping that you all like these panels that I'm showing off. I'm pretty proud of these panels. There's a lot of perspective going on, a lot of like depth perception in these. Um, so with the trees, you can see there's like a lot of ground getting further away from you. But then if you were to look at the perspective on this, I actually make it go down uh, to the bottom of the tree. And I followed that all the way through uh, in my perspective lines. And pretty cool. And I'm, I'm glad of that. And I'm, I know it's very tedious work. Um, but once you get the hang of stuff like perspective, it becomes a lot of fun. And, uh, and I had fun with this and I hope it came through. Um, you can see our giant over here, which we have not introduced yet. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and I'm sorry about that. Um, and then his little henchman standing beside him and you can see how big he is compared to that guy. He, the guy doesn't really compare in size and, uh, you know, what's that all about? How's that going to develop? You can tell these guys are like, oh, crap, you know, and they turn around and they're trying to be silent in a tree. As you can see, the guy's size, I don't know if the tree's really going to end up saving them from a guy that big. So we'll see what happens in the comic, but it's a lot of fun to put it out there. Um, and I hope you guys really uh, dig what we have coming your way. So let me get in here. I want to share a few other things. Um I've been working on some sketch cards and right now they're not sized for sketch cards and they're actually probably not going to be sketch cards. They're probably going to maybe even be trading cards where they'll just be prints and um, possibly even metal because I think the style I'm going for with the pencil look, an unfinished pencil look, um, I think it's going to translate well to a metal trading card. So that's this right here. Um, this is Mare, our main character. As you can see, I really tried to get a lot of depth in there, you know, right around uh, his, his uh, body. You can see there's, it, it really is round there and it feels like there's a leg. You can see there's uh, some chain mail on the leg here. And just, I really wanted there to be some detail in there but it's almost like an expressionist painting. You have to really just kind of play with it and get it to come out and hope that it just looks the way it does. And I think I achieved what I was looking for. 
Um, this is not my normal style of growing. This is something I spent a little more time on and I tried completely um, new things with it. I, I tried a new tool, which was the pencil tool. I, I haven't been drawing digitally and I just got into that. So this was one of the first things that I did, um, which I'm very proud of it. And then I tried over detailing and shadowing dark with the pencil so that you got a little more blacks. I was told that my blacks are, aren't usually evened out. Um, and every, that's something I think every artist struggles with is finding out where your blacks go. And then, you know, just some of the details. I mean, I feel like there's so much detail to his armor and you really get that in this. And I could see this as like a, just a, a bra, uh, like a brushed silver, brushed metal, um, card. And, you know, I'm going to have to talk to somebody like Phoenix animation, throwing out some names. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, he showed me what he can do and he's got some really cool stuff. So I'm just going to give him props for what he's doing because it's unique and it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And anytime you can get with creators that can do something that cool, then that's awesome. Um, so uh, let me move on. The next character I'll show you is Chiru. And I drew this live with uh, Joe and Sean on Ott and Stuff. Had a lot of fun with those guys drawing. Um, you know, a lot of different artists on there, but we had so much fun. And, um, you know, it's one of those things that I didn't know what I was going to draw. I didn't come prepared. They, they sent me a link and they were like, hey, Derek, you want to join in? And I was like, yeah. And I had, I had sent something to Joe earlier, like I would like to join in, but I wasn't sure if it would happen. And so I had no idea. So I was like, well, I could draw a sketch card or a trading card. And this is what I came up with. Um, this is Chiru. He's kind of the lighthearted, um, more kid-like of the group. He's young, very young. He's the kid of the group, if you want to think about him that way, because he is the youngest and least experienced. Um, they usually make him run. He's usually somebody who's fast and he can, you know, I got him hurtling over something like a fence or something. I haven't drawn that in, but uh, yeah, this was all done in about hour and a half. I think I finished it and um, you know, not bad, but I don't know if I'm fully happy. Probably going to change this pose for the trading card, but uh, it's a good start. It's a good place to be because he's, this gets his essence of his character. Um, he's definitely on the go, very happy, go lucky. Um, usually smiling. Uh, although he's of, if, if we were going to have in our world, something of a, an a equal culture, it would be more on the Indian culture, uh, from India that, um, you know, he would look a little more like that, but <laughs> I think he looks a little like Bancroft right here. But anyway, um, just, uh, wanted to, throw this sketch card out there. I'm going to, or this uh, trading card out here and put it up here closer where you guys can see it. Um, hope you guys can see that. Okay. So it's still, I'm happy with it. I am happy with the drawing. It's just, to me, I didn't get the detail and the depth that I got out of Mare, which is this one. And you can just see if you compare it side, you know, like that, it just didn't turn out. The next character I did, and the final thing I'll show you, and then we'll get down to drawing, is um, Zoon. Zoon is a great character, and she is the only female in the in the main group of heroes that we have. She's a total butt kicker, very cool, very much in the in the eastern side from the eastern side of our world, uh, just like you know Japan or China. We're not really given it, a, I think, defining that yet, but it, she's definitely in those realms. Um, and she's got the martial arts down because that's the culture she comes from. Um, but I really struggled with, with Zune's face. Uh, she's somebody that is also hard to draw. <laughs> Ethnicity is hard to draw. And so, you know, you can put a generic face on and a lot of comics 
have generic faces, but I don't want generic faces. I, I want you to, I kind of want you to see that these characters, you know, now I've over detailed the faces and not how I would do her as much like draw her in the comics, you know, but it is close to what I would think she would look like. Um, you know, trying to get the eyes right. <clears throat> and there's a lot of interpretation left to her face. I think, um, she's pretty, uh, but also like, man, she's got iron focus, man. She's just in it. And, uh, you know, I wanted to show that and then get into the detail of her hair um, with some negative space I put on her braids. And I think it came out really good. Um, she ends up looking like her hair is braided. It's flopping while she's posing like she just jumped into her pose with her bow staff. And uh, But once again, the unfinished pencil, um, you know, a little darker. I guess you could call it finished pencil, but... Um, it would probably come out a little different if it was inked, but I like that. I kind of like that rough pencil look sometimes. And I know some people say, you know, why do you want to make pencil so nice if you're going to ink it? But, um, yeah, I get that, but I don't think I'm going to ink this. I kind of like that grayed out look of the pencils gives you a lot of depth. And I think that's why I like pencils sometimes over pen, um, because you can get those different shades and you can do that with inks if you really take your time. But not being a well-trained inker, I don't get those very well. Um, but somebody who's very good at inking can do those tricks. Um, so there you have it. Those are our characters. I think now I'm going to get into drawing. Um, and I'll check and see if we got some people on here. Oh, Amanda. Hello, Amanda. I just saw you were on here. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate the comments. I'm glad you're watching. Um, and I appreciate your comment about the character designs. You know, I'm, I really love character design and I could probably sit and do that more than draw the panels of a comic, to be honest. Um, just because I think it's so fun. Uh, it's, you know, I grew up in the eighties where, uh, you know, there were some great character designs in the eighties. The eighties the had some of my favorites. He man, I think hands down had the best character designs and some people don't like it and it's cheesy. And I know that it has some really goofy things to it, but man, uh, when you really break down some of the armor and, and look at the ideas they had, man, they had an overabundance and it was fantastic. And I think the eighties were better off for it because we had some great cartoons that came out of that. And, uh, you know, we're still, we're still hooked on the eighties cartoons, um, you know, Voltron and mask and, um, uh, He-Man transformers, teenage, clear up to teenage mutant Ninja Turtles in the nineties. So, I mean, we're still hooked on those great character designs. Okay. So I actually have like a little sketch already drawn out of something I'm going to do, but I'm not going to, I'm not sure if I'm going to follow this or not. I haven't made up my mind. Um, I love to do these trading cards, but I think I just rough this out to see if it would work. And I am kind of digging the pose now that I've done it. Um, and I think I might just go ahead and work this a little bit and just see what I can get because burn is the character that I'm going to do. And burn is a character I haven't necessarily shown you yet. Um, he is the older character in our group. And he's, if you're going to look at what kind of character he really is, I would say he's probably more Germanic and uh, barbaric of the traditional sense. So he would fit right in, you know, Conan um, <laughs> and, and maybe even Masters of the Universe if we could really get him in there. But, um, you know, I definitely wanted to have fun when I was doing it. Kevin gave me the ideas to uh, draw and, and create these characters. And for me, I think Burn is really, we call him Edelburn, but Burn for short. And so I think what I'm going to do is open a page and let you see what he looks like in the comic. So I'm going to show you another comic book. 
So this is um, page 12 of our comic book. Like I said, a lot of the panels are done. I might work on some of the lettering still, um, but there's a good shot of burn making bigger here. Um, you know, you see a lot more detail when you, sh when you zoom in like that, but uh, yeah, here he is. He's talking to Mare, our main character. He's got this like barbaric look to him. He's definitely um, somebody who's more on the like rougher side, but he, he loves animals. He's, Kevin said he's not a hater of animals, even though he wears like skulls and bones and stuff. He's a lover of animals. He train he wants to train animals and he understands them. And so the reason why Mare finds him useful is because he's got this affinity for beasts and for the things that they hunt. And so, um, hey, Jim Cox, how you doing? I'm glad you joined us tonight. Uh, I think it's great. I'm going to get down to drawing here in just a minute. I'm just trying to explain some characters to you. So thanks for joining. But let me get back to this. I'll scroll down, just show you another angle. Uh, we got some different viewpoints of burn. Yeah, here's a backside to him. He's got some fur. They're wearing furs. They're going up in the mountains and things. He's got some skulls of beasts we've never seen before. Um, so there you go. There's burn. I think that gives you a full rounded out view of him, almost every angle. <laughs> uh, okay, so now I'm going to get into drawing. Um, make sure you guys can still see what I'm doing. Okay, so once again, I'm just going to pencil here and um, just see what I can get into. I, you know, I, I usually start with the head rough it out. I don't know if I'll stay there. Um, for me, it's all about the gesture first. So that's why I kind of like digital because I can actually, I can get that gesture and look at it and go, well, that don't look right. You know, um, you know, if I was to draw that through, this isn't looking the way it should. And, and then I can readjust or start over and, um, you know, it, it helps and you can hide it. You can erase it quick too. <laughs> so I'll get all his musculature done. Um, get his back hunched over a little bit. Like he's just clubbing the crap out of something with his big uh, jawbone. And uh, he's taking the jawbone from a big beast with gnarly teeth still stuck in the jawbone. So, and that's... Um, we don't have a name for this weapon yet. We got to name the weapon. So if you guys have some great ideas, throw it out there. I apologize if I fall off and don't talk as much during this time, but sometimes concentration takes a lot of effort. So, but um, I do enjoy this part when I can actually flex, you know, flesh it out and, and uh, get the main part of it going just to where it looks cool. And then I'll readjust. And at this point, this stage in my game, I'm not really looking for perfection here. I'm just getting overall design is the muscle where I want it to be. Um, or is it not doing it yet? Not shaped there right? Um, I don't know. I go through a lot of turmoil in that sometimes. Inner turmoil. I'm trying to make sure that my musculature is correct. Yeah, I don't 
know if I like that. Let's back out of that. Yeah, I'm not liking that forearm as much, but that's okay because we're not we're not there yet. The thing is, with some of the some of the design work on these characters, I, I've drawn them in the panels, but like on these trading cards, I've never put them in these poses before, so it's all very new to me, and so it's hard to really um, know if I'm doing it right, you know. And I, and so a lot of it's just feeling it out, and I, you know, I'm experimenting. Uh, I'm having trying to have some fun. And what I like to do mostly is get their body in there first before I draw the clothes on sometimes. Um, and, you know, if that's your style or if you like to do that when you draw, that's great. That's To me, it's whatever works for you as an artist. Um, yeah, like right now, I'm not getting his leg big enough. So, oops. Yeah, I went out too far. So we're going to take that off. Okay. And I usually like big muscular thighs and I like them to be bulky a little bit. And I feel like um, somebody like him, you know, he needed to be big because of, uh, because of what he does. Um, he handles big animals and livestock. And so, um, world building, you know, it makes sense that a guy like him is a big dude. Whereas versus Chiru, Chiru is not a big guy. He's, um, He's definitely going to be just a maybe Spider-Man size, um, not even Spider-Man size. He might even be thinner than Spider-Man if you really want to think about it, because I think sometimes that's what's, you know, overdone. It's fun to have comics that, that have big guys, but it's also, you know, not everybody has to be ripped to the max. Um, in fact, that makes your heroes stand out a little more when you've got guys that you know, that are, um, that are bigger. Oh, wow. I messed that up. I need to come back further on that. I'm just make some rippling muscles in there. And I might fix those later. We'll see. What do we got? Got anybody else in the chat? Oh, okay. Jim, I hope you're still here. Amanda, I hope you're still here. Don't mean to bore everybody. I know it can be boring sometimes watching draw streams. So, um, But I'm glad you guys stopped by. It was really cool of you. I hope more people can do that. Yeah, not quite what I wanted. There we go. And I am using a little bit of reference for some arms, but other than that, um, I just wanted to see maybe... Uh, I feel like my weakness sometimes is, is new poses and, you know, it's hard to, hard to feel that out.
If I was to come around with his belly right here, that would connect. And then I do have some like He-Man belts that I've given these guys. <laughs> what can I say? I had a lot of influence from He-Man. But if I was to sketch quick, that's what I would do. Actually, I forgot his belt buckle. Another good reason to draw digital. Uh, whoops. Got it on the wrong tool now. Shoot. Do that sometimes, and I switch my tool. Let's see what happens here. Sometimes it doesn't want to let go. It's almost like it gets stuck. Hmm. Well, sorry, everybody. Having a bit of a struggle. Let's see what I can do here. Will not get off the lock, so I'm really struggling with my draw here. Might have to get out of it for a minute. <laughs> well, this is fun. It's not working for me. Well, anyway, we'll make it work. If you guys can hang with me, I can make it happen. It's just going to take a minute. I had to fight this the other day, too, and it just is... I don't know if it's something with my pen or if it's something with the cord, maybe. I'm not sure what it is, but it's a struggle sometimes. There we go. Now we got it. Yay, I'm back. Back in business. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> Hello, Joseph. Nice of you to join us again. I appreciate it. I was having a little bit of technical difficulties, everybody, so I'm really sorry about that. Um, once again... Back in business, so I'm gonna get this going. Um, you know, Burn has a big, he's got a big buckle on him. And uh, you're not gonna see that in some of the shadow, but I'm gonna put it in there just so we can have it for reference right now. You know, the process, talking about the process, uh, Joseph, I, I enjoy that almost more than anything. Is just, this is one of my favorite things to do. And, um, and it's so fun to just see what I can come up with. And, um, you know, it's taken me a long time to develop some of these characters. But I've had a lot of fun. Uh, Kevin and I have had a lot of fun doing this. And it's, it's become a labor of love for me. It's definitely something I'm very proud of. I've never done this much work on a comic book. Um, so this is my first project. And I'm just really happy to take it this far. See, I needed reference on my own character. There we go. It's been a while since I've drawn his buckle. But um, yeah, I mean, to take it this far and to be... Um, 
this far developed in, with characters and everything. It's just amazing to me. And I never thought we would. I never thought that I would uh, actually, it's going to say, uh, actually go this far. I thought, oh, we'll work on it and it'll kind of, you know, peter out or whatever. But actually, um, I found that I was loving this more than almost any other thing I was doing as far as you know, like playing music and everything. And I love music. Um, but this was just fulfilling me in a whole different way. And, you know, and when you get things that do that, you get that creative outlet that flows, then it's really hard to go back. I mean, it's really hard to, and it's not that I don't want to go back to music. It's just that now that I've had all this time um, playing, it's like, you know, playing with these characters and playing with uh, this world. It's almost like I don't want to leave it very often. Um, and it's not just for escapism. It's just the fact that I think it's become a baby, you know, and, um, and I love what I've done with it. And I want to make sure that it's taken on a life, even though I didn't create this. Uh, Kevin's actually the one that created these characters and um, he's got a great imagination too. Um, and Kevin and I kind of have the same interests. So whenever we were working together, uh, we were working together in probation. I'm not a probation officer. I was actually helping uh, people with felonies get jobs. And Kevin was working with people to help them get treatment once they got out of incarceration. And, uh, and so we work together to get those things done. And, uh, it's really interesting because we just, one day we were in a training and I think he's mentioned this before, but, uh, we were in a training and I started doodling cause I was bored and I've been doing, I've been doing, uh, what I've been doing, working in corrections and in, um, this field for, you know, at that time it was around 14 years. Um, and so I had heard most of everything that, that you're going to hear. And he, you know, Kevin had been working in it in a few years too, but, um, you know, after you get in there for so long, you just start getting bored of everything. So I was drawing Batman during the training, <laughs> just having some fun. And he saw it and he was like, Oh my gosh, you draw comics. And I was like, yeah, I like to draw comic characters and I love it. And then we just hit it off and started talking about, um, you know, our love for all those characters and comic books. And then we got into Kevin drawing or writing, I'm sorry, a, a graphic novel, which I've kind of pushed him to maybe not let it be a graphic novel. Um, It'll, I think eventually it'll turn into like a collected thing where we get these issues out and it'll hopefully be um, all collected into one, you know, but for now it's, I think we're going to have to release it one by one until we get everything uh, together, uh, several issues together and get it out there. But the, the fun thing about it is, Kevin and I have very similar tastes as far as um, the characters and comics and things. And he, you know, heavily into Lord of the Rings. Um, and, and I was too at that time. And, and I still am. Um, I think now things are a little different just because Lord of the Rings is old now and it's been out for so long. So it's like, you know, you start trying to find some new, new things to gravitate to. But, it's really something that, uh, that, you know, for me, it's, I always want to revisit and, uh, your influences, you know, you want to go back to them because really the influences are very important. Um, 
you know, for me, I, I like going back and studying it. it and it's almost not fun anymore because <laughs> I'm going back to study what these uh, people did to bring these characters to life. And I'm trying to figure it out. And it's fun to do, uh, but it's also very uh, tedious at times. So, and I think other creators probably know what I'm talking about because you're always looking for like, why am I so influenced by this? Or why is this, you know, affecting me this way? And um, some people know right away, but other people, you know, you just need to stew on it for a little bit and sit on it. But I, I know why I like this stuff. And to me, it's mainly because it captured an imagination for me. Um, it, it gave me something that I was like, oh my gosh, those characters are amazing. Um, and I just love how they were developed. And, uh, and then the worlds they put them in are just amazing. So, and to me, that's, it's very important. It, um, uh, and it helps me because my creativity, I have to do something to create. And, you know, and to me, if I can't create, there's a part of my spirit that just, it wilts. Um, I have to be able to do it. And uh, I think Kevin has a little bit of that too, you know, with him writing and things. I can't speak to him or, you know, what he feels like most of the time, but I think that's very true for him. The, the creativity thing, and especially now that we've developed something that, he sees is actually, um, you know, coming to fruition, something that he's spent so long on. Um, I think he's, you know, he's, he's happy to see that. And, uh, and that gets you excited. I mean, it, it makes me excited too. And I need it, you know, I gotta have it. I gotta, I have to have that fulfillment. And, uh, Otherwise, it's just not going to be the same for me. And I'm like, why am I doing it? Because uh, there's no passion or no feel for it, you know. It's why my job is just a job. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm going to take that back. You know, I, I don't think my job is just a job. But it, I fight through it a little more than I would fight being creative. Let me just put it that way. Um it's, it's really hard to, wow, that's a funny ear. Um, it's, you know, especially after doing it for 20 years, I feel um, like if I, if I could stop doing it, that would be great. But I also feel like I know why I'm doing this job. Uh, and it's got to do with just knowing that I have a heart for people um, who are involved in those kinds of things. And it does take a certain kind of person to, to do that work. I do not like where I went with his face. Let me see where I was at here. Okay, that's a little better. A little more angle to it. That's what I needed. And so... Um, being creative, I'm, in, you know, being in a band and being in, uh, into comics and drawing, I think it fulfills everything I need. And, uh, and I love that. Let's see if I have that level. Well, I was almost right on without using my guide. Let's see where we're at. Not doing too bad. <laughs> you must not have noticed I was having technical difficulties. That's funny. I know I'm a few minutes behind, but still. Uh, <laughs> thanks for hanging in there because I was really getting nervous. 
I was getting nervous. It was not going to fix but I, I must've found what was wrong. Cause I, I just kept working at it. So thank you for staying with me. Yeah. Something's wrong right here. There we go. That's a little better. Um, and so I think once I get his club out here drawn, I've pretty much got the shape of what I want. It's just going to be detailing. And, you know, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's right. I'm going to have to. It's better where it was. There we go. Um, oh, that is definitely not right. There we go. You hear my son laughing in the background. <laughs> he just got off work, so he's taking his chill time in his bedroom watching some stuff. So. <laughs> I do enjoy hearing him laugh, though. So, Burn has a big jawbone. And from this angle, it's going to look really weird. I'm going to try to make it really gnarly. Like it's just been kind of, I don't know, maybe not dented, but maybe that animal that had some problems, <laughs> some, uh, some mouth problems, maybe, whenever it was alive. But it's definitely getting bigger as it comes at you. Um, we'll get some, like, some depth to it here coming around. But it's got these big, gnarly teeth. And uh, actually, I should erase this part and draw the big, gnarly teeth on there first. Yeah. Hopefully that'll come into into play a little more. There we go. There's one big gnarly tooth tooth. Uh, and we're gonna cover up some knees and things, but that's okay. We'll put these big teeth coming at you. I don't like the tangent. Okay, let me get back here. Got some gnarly edges to it. I put this big tooth here, but I think I'm going to make one right here sticking out a little bit. And a little too square. Right there. And then we're going to make one come in here. Let me turn it around. I may not be happy with that. Nope. So let me get this. We can make that jawbone come around. Ooh. Okay. Boy, that thing had some messed up teeth, whatever it was. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to look at, um, you know, burn a little bit more. He's... He's definitely got a unique outfit. Um, very barbarian, which is what I was going for. I wanted him to be this guy that, you know, he looks like he came out of 
Germania. But, you know, our, our comic book's going to have um, a Pangea. And because it's got Pangea, all these different cultures have come together. Uh, and which drives people from all over the world together to fight together, which is kind of fun to mess with. Because, And I like actually thinking of defining different cultures with these characters. It's kind of fun. It's challenging to draw. But it's also different. You know, we can explore some different realms, some different things that we've never seen. And um, our story takes place before the flood. And because it takes place before the flood, we can even mess with a little bit of things. Um, oh, hey, Jim, that would be amazing. So I appreciate that, man. Um, I would love to have another artist come on sometime and draw with me. Yeah, that'd be great. Draw at the same time. We can talk. That'd be fantastic. Um, so anytime. Uh, I may hit you up the next time I do this. So look out, Jim. I'm going to do it. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, so anyway, the character is very, very much, uh, I guess, based on Germania. But we took we borrowed from different time frames because we're like, well, what if before the flood there were some technologies that never came out before. Um, if the flood happened, because a lot of cultures talk about the flood. It's not just one religion that talks about the flood. And so what if, because of all these cultures having this flood in their, in their, you know, in their, not only religions, but in their stories that they tell each other. Um, what if there was technology? And in that technology, we have things like, you know, weapons, um, clothing, buildings, um, you know, technology we take for granted right now, but things that may have happened back then, and we can kind of have fun with it. We can design this world to be anything we want. It can have, you know, uh, creatures that we've never seen before. And it can also have um, cultures we've never seen before and religions things like that that are that are unknown to modern man. And I think that's some of the most intriguing pieces of the story. It makes it interesting and uh, gives you gives you some fun play time, you know, something to play with. So that was the idea behind some of the designs and, and the characters that Kevin came up with. I think he did a great job at um, at developing these characters. Um, it's funny, I, I went through and did all this musculature on him, but I actually wish, almost wish I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> I, I needed to make this, um, this uh, furry, fur over his shoulder and I totally forgot. But I like, I like that I can go back. Digital makes it nice that I can just kind of go back. But I'm going to make this fur. Um, I'm going to go down in size. I'm going to zoom in a little more. And it's almost like it's got a bear claw on the end of it. So we got these like claws coming over here. And uh, these gnarly up claws coming off this thing. Ah, I don't like the way I did the last two. So let's redo it. And I'll come back in and I'll finish that up once I get the fur going the way I want it to. Um, but I definitely want to get this fur hanging over him. And it's something that kind of drapes around him. And he use the arm of this animal, like a bear, to uh, you know drape over almost like a cape. Which is fun. Um... Very tedious to draw, though. I will say, very tedious. And then he's got this big metal plate that hangs down here, and, he, and that's more of his armor. I mean, he didn't really, he's more of a does it work for me? Or, you know, is it practical? Or am, you know, am I just trying to look cool? 
And actually, I'm making him more practical. I want him somebody to be somebody who doesn't do things because of looks. He's very out of sync with kind of their, what they would call modern. Um, for them, he's not in with the times, I guess you could say. He's more about his own thing. And he's a survivalist. And I think because of that, this guy is not going to be all about the fashion. <laughs> Sorry to break the hearts out there, but he's definitely somebody who's doing his own thing. Which I always like to sing that song from Sesame Street. One of these kids is doing his own thing. One of these kids doesn't belong. <laughs> and so <laughs> join in if you if you know the song. So there we go, and I'll clean this up. But actually, I mean, I'm not going to clean it up a lot because I feel like there's a lot of shadow that's going to come in this. And it's just this big metal plate, like this big metal armor piece that he just put on. It's it's uh, it's going to be shadowed. It's going to be covered up here in just a few minutes, so I'm not really worried about detail. And, you know, not going to do it. Oh, Jim. Oh, you're not an artist. I'm sorry. I thought you liked to draw too. But hey, you want to get on and talk? That's cool too, man. Whatever you want to do, that'd be great. Amanda, <laughs> you have some great sandwiches out there. I've seen them, what they look like. They look pretty yummy. So I'm going to have to check those out again. Hey, hey, we got Mo Biggs in here. Hello, Mo Biggs. How are you? Hope everything's going well for you, man. So with this big metal plate, um, I sometimes lose the design for it <laughs> because I, I think I've kind of played around with some different designs for it. And, um, you know, really... It's something that I think I'm probably experimenting with still. And so trying to get to a picture of him so that I can figure this out. Um, get to some finished pages. A little bug flying around here. Okay. Well, I'm going to come back to that part. Glad you all can join me tonight, man. It makes me feel so good to have you all here. Um, I'm very happy about that. And it's really nice to see you all. Ooh, hop on YouTube and grab him a wrench. <laughs> you know what? I got to figure out how to do that. I've never done that, and I need to know. Like, that's going to be very interesting. Um, I will try to get that done. I will try to get that done, Mo. Um. As soon as I figure out how to do it, I will do it for you. So let me see what this does.
All right, we're looking good. Okay, so I'm going to get back into throwing this fur. Trying to be a little quicker about what I'm doing here, too. Sometimes I found drawing negative space helps a lot, too, whenever you're getting this. going here again. So Byrne wears this skull on his head, or on his shoulder, I mean. He wears this skull on his shoulder that kind of sits off his shoulder like this and it's a, this weird yeah I kind of drew that a little off right here let me fix that We'll get that going. Not sure if I like that one now. So that comes off his shoulder there. And okay. Boy, I need to figure out how to do that, Mo. So I guess I can do it in, in uh, YouTube. I'll have to get in there here in a little bit and do it. I was trying not to make this stream forever, but it seems like it's going well, and I don't really want to stop what I'm doing. i got this flow going right now. Okay, getting there, getting there, getting there. A lot of details in these characters sometimes. And 
I can finish the fur over here. I got to get this ear out of here. It's just too big. Getting there, making progress. Sorry for the silence, but it's getting a little focused on that fur. <laughs> Let these claws stand out a little more. So, once again, I'm just so happy to have everybody on here. Um, you know, I've been trying to catch as many streams as I can. And, you know, my wife's like, why aren't you coming to bed? <laughs> I'm like, well, Bancroft's on. <laughs> so she's like, why are you staying up every night for this stupid show? And I'm like, well, you know, I have a lot of fun. On and, uh, and I, I am so glad that I hopped on that show and just happened to see it because, um, you know, Michael gave me a shot to talk on there and um, it was just super incredible and I'm, I'm very thankful for it. And, uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun. I've, I'm starting to make some new friends and I, I do feel like I'm, part of a community and, um, you know, it's growing and slow coming, but it's there. And it's, it's something that I feel pretty good about. Um, as far as, you know, where, where it's going to, whoops, wrong button, uh, where it's going to lead and everything. Cause I'm just having a good time and I, I want to just support people. And I, I've always wanted to be part of something that, um, you know, you feel like people are there to support you and, but you're supporting them as well. It's a, it's like this give and take and it feels really good. I'm, I'm very happy. And, uh, and as much as there's some hate towards the group, which I know that gets brought up a lot, but I haven't seen it all the time. I, I think if you get involved in it, it's there, but really, to be honest, it's not something I see every day and I don't care to see it every day. So I'm going to try to stay out of it, you know. It's uh, it's not my thing, you know. I want to. I'm here to support all the artists, all the creators, and you know, whatever that is, as long as they're not, you know, damaging people and damaging the art form, things like that, dude. 
Let's let's do this. Let's have some fun. Um, really seen some very cool projects coming along, and it's uh, kind of puts you in your place a little bit. It's really humbling to know people are that good. But it's really nice to jump in. And, it, you know, it was getting to the point where I did see some hate for a while. And, I, and me and Kevin talked. And I was just like, you know what? I don't I don't care anymore. I'm, I'm at a place where what do we have to lose? Um, we have everything to gain and nothing to lose. And he felt the same way um, where it was. It was this thing of, uh, you know what, we're getting support, we're having fun, uh, there's a community here, so why are we so afraid to jump into it? And finally we said, you know, we're, it's not, not good to be afraid um, just because people want to tear other people down. So we're not going to be a part of it. Um, we we jumped in and we said, you know what, we're not going to be a part of that stuff. We're going to be a part of something that is supportive and fun that we can laugh and, and enjoy other creators work. People can enjoy our work and that's where we're at, man. Like that's important. There's too much other crap to get into these days and it's super nice to see people, um, being supportive of one another. Too big. <laughs> Don't say golden rule. Yeah, I won't say it. Still going to have a good time though. So it does apply, but yeah, I won't say it for you. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but man, you know, I'm, I'm finding just the coolest people. And that's what I think everybody wants. Everybody wants to find cool people, um, people they can feel connected to um, in whatever way. And, and you know, with me uh, drawing, I, you know, I was having a hard time um, finding a community of people that did what I did. Um, I didn't know this existed for a long time. Uh, until last year. And then once I figured it out, then I was like, oh, wow, man, this is great. And there, you know, there was like, ooh, I keep on doing that. There are these um, well established artists, you know, in, in CG that I had no idea. And I've, you know, I've heard of guys like, you know, Dan Fraga and all those guys that, um, it, it just blew me away that they were involved and, uh, it was such a cool thing to hear and see and, um, and, you know, connect to, uh, I think that's, that's the most important part. Not sure I like where that's going yet. I may have to change that a little bit. Sometimes I like to darken, you know, overshadow, and then I'll back it off. I'll, I'll erase or I'll, I'll draw white into it to texture um, because I feel like, you know, it helps me. I would rather have more dark, and then you can always back out if you need to. Um, yeah, like right here, I need to. I want to draw that tooth up a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. 
go down the size. Uh, did anybody watch the Fraga show last night? Um, they drew Silver Surfer. Uh, very good artwork came out of that last night. Really fun stuff. Um, I was impressed. I am not necessarily, I mean, I like Mobius and what I've seen, but I'm not like knowledgeable where I could just pull out a drawing like that. So for them to do that, I know a lot of them were like, well, I'm not doing Mobius, but I'm going, well, you know, some of you guys actually pulled it off, even though you didn't mean to. And I thought that was cool. Um, I know Irene, she got in there and man, she killed it. And she even did a piece later that looked awesome, which I, uh, I was pretty impressed with. I was like, man, she actually stuck it out. She didn't just let the show beat her. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm liking how this is coming. I'm going a little over. I mean, if you guys, if this is too long, hey, you know, to let me know. But uh, it, it's fun to sit here and draw and see what I can come up with. So, <laughs> awesome, though. <laughs> you got to love it. So Jim, you say I'm fairly. So does that mean you're familiar with Mobius? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of fans out there, and I, I understand why he's great. I just didn't follow Silver Surfer that much, so it didn't make me very knowledgeable. Um, but boy, do I appreciate that work. And I know any stylized work like that, it's hard to achieve. It's, it really is. Um, you know, I don't even know if I've settled into any kind of style yet. I'm sure I have. I just don't necessarily know what it is. Um, but, you know, that's that's something that I know will come. And I'm just going to be – I saw uh, Clayton Barton put a thing out today, just like, be patient with your artwork. And I'm like, you know, he's so right with that. Um, very timely with it and, and right. Um, I'm not rushing my art. I'm just going to enjoy – and I hope other people enjoy it. I hope the energy comes through and it ends up being something that, you know, people want to pick up and look at. And, you know, I think Kevin and I have kind of adopted Todd McFarlane's sayings a little bit. Um, he did. I don't worship the ground the guy walks on or anything, but. He's got some good ideas, um, but just the, if it looks sexy, then do it because, you know, if your art looks good, meaning, then stick with it. It may not be exactly what you wanted. It may not be, you know, your idea in your head, but if it looks good, so be it. You know what I mean? And, and I think that's a great philosophy for this kind of stuff, because if you like it, other people are going to like it. So if you think it's, you know, sexy, uh, for lack of better terminology, then go for it. And, uh, that's what I'm trying to stick to. I think it's a cool philosophy to think of because it, it lets you get excited about your own work. And I know that's one thing Todd McFarlane always was. He was kind of excited about his own work. Um, some people may not have liked that about him, and I totally understand that too. Uh, but it rubbed off on me. Ah, fairly new to comics. Okay, Jim. I uh, don't know about you all, about the about the old classics. I'm watching what all of you new guys are doing. Boys liked art, but never got into any until now. Okay. 
Well, you have a lot to learn then. There's a lot of things for you to go through and look at. Um, and, you know, that's one thing I would look at. I mean, go back and check some of those old comics out. I mean, there's so many great artists out there to check out um, that I feel like if you don't, you're missing out on some great things. Um, there was some great art in the eighties that happened. There was great art in the nineties. And to me, it, you know, when you, it's the same thing with music. It's like when you listen to some of the older music, you understand why the art is the way it is now. So why music is where it is now and where it's developed. And so, um, I would recommend anybody new to this, go check out some older stuff. Um, don't get just locked into what's out now because it's limiting. And it's also, you know, I, I think there's just things going on back then that they're not doing now. Um, you know, 90s right now have a big influence on artists today. Because a lot of those artists were young and, and while well, they were young in the 90s and now they've grown up and they're doing their own thing. And you'll hear guys like Shelby. He'll talk about how the 90s influenced him. You know, Eric Weathers. I mean, a lot of those guys have, have mentioned things that they grew up with in the 90s and how that's totally uh, influenced what they love and what they do now. And it's rightly so it's it's something that uh art always influences art and uh you know the reason why we love these characters and love comics is because when we grew up we had some great comic books to read uh great characters to latch on to and you know like i said i grew up in the 80s with he-Man and all the cartoons, um, you know, that was my thing coming home from school, watching all those cartoons and just uh, wanting to design like that. And I was, I was always into drawing whenever I was little. Um, I mean, when I was real little, it was the Smurfs. <laughs> I mean, cartoon characters, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but then when I got older, it was definitely comic books and it was, it was cartoons of the eighties, uh, like after school cartoons, GI Joe, that too. Uh, once again, a bunch of character designs in those cartoons and yes, that is what influenced me. It gets me excited. Um, and it's why I still do it. So yes, go in, check out some of that new or, you know, those new comics, but I would take a history lesson and go back in and see what you missed out on a little bit too, because you may find some really cool things in there. And I'm kind of a history guy too. I like history. So it's fun to go back. Shelby is so nineties. He named his book 94, which is coincidentally the year Shelby formed the Foo Fighters. Yes, Mo, you are correct. Shelby formed the Foo Fighters. I was the drummer, by the way, <laughs> or I hope to be. I mean, if we get Joe Sontag in here and Shelby, I can drum. I think we got the rock band going. I don't know what you guys think, but I think it'd be fun. <laughs> okay. I feel kind of stuck. Sometimes I get that way whenever I do things like this because I like the development of where I'm going, but I also feel like I could be doing a little better. And so I get myself stuck sometimes. Um, okay. All right. What well, did Jim, Jim, are you still with us? Just ask him, just would like to know if you're not, that's cool. Wasn't sure if that was you. What? I think it got a notification. You're live. I'm not sure if you do your own show or not. So, if so that'd be great. Uh, 
Ah, uh, there we go. So that's what I get stuck on too sometimes with these guys is uh, drawing, like finishing their hands, finishing all the details. Sometimes I don't like to do that live. Um, I know when they talk about Roquefort, um, I don't know. I don't think he likes to do his process live. <laughs> and I totally get that. Um, it, it gets nerve wracking putting yourself out there. Even if people like what you're doing, it's, it's nerve wracking and it kind of defocuses you. Um, and so you, I found I'm just messing anywhere and everywhere I can mess instead of actually, uh, detailing what I should be detailing. I guess I can work on his face a little bit. And you know, the cool thing about burn, um, is he's very much, whoops, he's very much a, I don't know, just a barbaric type of dude. And he's got this, He's got this haircut. I guess you would almost call it a modern haircut. <laughs> I was going for more of like a Viking style and it ended up being, but not like hardcore Viking. I just gave him like this, almost like a Mohawk cut, but it ends up laying over and gives him a modern hipster haircut, which is kind of funny. Um, and a lot of times I find myself starting his hair First, um, yeah, let me back out. That is not what I wanted to do. Um, and it's kind of funny because I, I really play with it a lot. No, I don't like that. Gave him almost an emo look. Definitely not going for that. No emos in our book. Nothing against emos, but not in our book. Yeah, there we go. I'm starting to put him in per in perspective now. Get a little more feel for his girth. I'm loving it. Like liking the feel. Maybe he's just modest. <laughs> maybe so, Mo. <laughs> um, you know, maybe so. But I think he's a little ahead of his time. Let's just put it that way. He's before the flood. But shoot, his hair's in style right now. If I only had hair, I would grow hair like his with my long beard and I would be a hipster with him. Did you say Durst is in a band, Amanda? <laughs> well, don't they call him, what do they call him? Oh yeah, Fred Durst. Fred, oh man, I have a really hard time calling Joe Fred Durst. It's more of an insult to me than it is <laughs> then it is like fun. Um, but yeah, I don't know why he's shy about it either, Mo. You know, I, I think he's talked about it. He has actually played guitar like on the live stream. I think he did a little bit of a guitar thing. But uh, anyway, I don't know. So Unhinged Entertainment went live if I follow him. Okay, I don't. I do think I follow him on Twitter, but I don't think I do on that on YouTube. Might have to go follow the show. But if you guys would like to jump on there, that'd be great. Whatever you guys feel like doing. 
Um, I'm just drawing for fun. I'm probably going to end before too long because it's been an hour and a half, but I really enjoy doing this. So I'm not ready to quit yet. Um, Well, noses are very hard for me, um, and I sometimes, I don't like what I just did, uh, I have to go down in size a little bit just to get the detail where I want it. Hmm. Nope. Not liking it. So I end up redrawing a nose a few times just to get the feel. Uh, sometimes I really find that I have a certain way that I do a nose. But it ends up really coming out more my style when I do it. So that's what I... I don't even like that very well. Yeah. I could get some more. Get some rage on his face a little bit. I'm probably going to make his jaw come down a little more, too. Hmm. Okay. Get that line cleaned up a little bit. See what we got going on here. Okay. If I like that mouth, but it's fun. <laughs> Mouths are a little hard. Yeah. His face isn't really coming out the way I'm wanting it to. That's okay. Sometimes it takes a little resizing, playing around with. Once again, this is new to me drawing digital. Um, I actually, just started drawing digitally recent, um, like a month ago. And so all that's pretty brand new. Mustache really finishes him off, so in the beard.
Thanks, Mo. I really appreciate that. Um, don't go back to reading Six Gun Gorilla. Stay on my live stream. No, I'm just kidding. It's all good, man. That that cover that they're putting on the Six Gun Gorilla, uh, the Iron Maiden homage, I don't know if you saw that, um, where it was a uh, stranger in a strange land where he's got the gun in the bar and those guys are sitting around the bar. They look like aliens in there with him. Man, that's gorgeous. So I don't know if you saw that or not, but that'd be great. Um, I almost wanted to back it just for that alone. Get that beard going here. Yeah, we're getting there. So some of this is still experimenting. <laughs> I'm just trying to see what works, play with it. And I'm not the best at mouths, I gotta be honest. Yeah, something's off. That's okay. I won't fix it. I'm going to fix it. This face needs to widen here. Ah, uh, I know what it is. It's the eye. to fix that. Went in there and drew his hair and forgot to erase the skull line. Fun times. I 
There we go. Starting to take some shape here now. Jeesh. So, um, if you guys are still with me, you know, I appreciate it so much. I know it gets kind of boring watching all this for a while, but, uh, I'm having a blast. I was really having fun talking to you in the chat too. I really appreciate, appreciate everybody that came. And, um, I just love that you guys do that and show support. And I know you don't have to, and, uh, man, that me it does mean a lot. It does mean a lot to me. And, it helps. I mean, knowing that you guys were here supporting me tonight really helped me um, finish this a little more and work on it and keep going because I did almost just give up a little bit ago. I thought, nah, it's not going the way I want. I better just quit while I'm ahead. But, you know, I'm going to embrace the mistakes, have fun with it. Um, I'm going to finish this at another time. Um you know, I'm enjoying what I come up with, so I will be working on this some more. So don't think this is the last that you've seen of this drawing. But it's definitely um, going to take me a lot more time to get this done. And so for those that you stuck it out, of you that stuck it out, um, I, I so appreciate it. And, uh, you know, Murph, I'm sorry you couldn't join me tonight. I uh, had a lot of fun drawing, and uh, thanks for giving me that opportunity, but I'm sad you're under the weather. Uh, hopefully, you know, you'll feel better, and, um, you know, next week we'll, we'll get this going to where, um, you know, we'll have some good content to bring everybody and some you know, interesting news about our comic. Uh, we are getting ready to start our campaign and we're going to actually like start to design. And, and I keep saying design because we don't know what our goals are, our stretch goals. We don't know. I mean, we're, we're coming up with some products. We're trying to come up with some things like perks, um, tiers. We got to design that and see what it all looks like. And so, um, you know, it's just, it's going to take a lot of effort. And like I said, we, we got the comic pretty much done. I think there's like two things to do as far as actual art, um, but they're very minor things. Then it goes to the editor and then hopefully the colorist. Um, and, you know, everything else is pretty much done. Um, the lettering, the inking, and the art was all done by me. Kevin wrote and helped, um, you know, create the characters and develop them and, and even design pages. Like he helped me do thumbnails and things like that for the pages. Um, and so we've had a blast doing this and it's been a great time. I mean, I love uh, the process. It's just been a lot. And, uh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Good people migrate to good people. Thank you, Jim. I really appreciate that. And Amanda says, are you sure about that, Jim? Oh, and I don't blame you. Yeah, I know. I don't know if, if that's true sometimes or not, but I enjoyed having you guys on. I think it was great, but, um, yeah, so be on the lookout. I'm, uh, we are going to get our campaign, our, our mailing list put up very soon. Um, and I say very soon, probably like in a month or two. Let's say that. Let's give it a window of about that. Um, and that's mainly because I want to have some ducks in the row before we, you know, in a row because, well, before we put everything out there, I want to make sure I have things in order just to make sure we're organized. I'm an organized guy. I try to be yeah, it, you can't do it with everything, but I want to try. And, you know, I'm trying to learn still what makes a good campaign. 
Um, what do people want? Um, and, you know, I don't want to put a campaign out there and just have it be things. I, I want it to tie into our comic and have thought put into it. And, man, even competing with some of those people. Like, when I think of Irene and the things that she's done with um, Fiendish, those those uh, wooden plaques that she does, that she burns into, man, those are beautiful. Um, she did some amazing artwork on that. So there's stuff like that, you know, you're like, okay, we don't necessarily have to compete with it, but what can we do to, to draw people in to ours, you know, like that? Um, what's going to, what's going to attract, you know, the fans and, um, you know, I don't want to put a bunch of weird stuff in there that nobody's really going to appreciate. You know, I want to put a couple things in there, make it really worth it. Um, so less could be more if it's really got some value to it. Uh, things like that. So anyway, that's where we're at. Um, you know, Kevin and I will be doing our stream every Tuesday at eight o'clock. We usually only go an hour. I went longer because this was a draw stream and it's just fun to talk. And I appreciate everybody coming. Um, you know, but we're going to have some guests coming on. Last week we had 656 comics. So if you guys want to rewatch that. Um, check that out. We had a great conversation with those guys. We're probably going to invite somebody else on coming up very soon um, and try to have some different guests as we go along and just build that momentum up. And, um, you know, I, I'm up for anything, you know, if it's just having Jim on and, and uh, talking or if it's, you know, having some creators on and doing things. Kevin and I love to talk music. We love to talk movies. We love to talk comic books and creativity. Um, the reason why we call it Duke it out, I'll just give you this and this will be it. Um, Kevin and I argue a lot for fun. Um, and it's not, you know, we get downright dirty in our arguments. We just do, but there's no hate. It's more like, um, I'm going to win the argument. Not, I hate you. Uh, it's, <laughs> it sounds like it though. It can sound pretty heavy, but we don't want that to be on the show. We're going to have fun on the Duke it out part. Um, so at the end of our our stream, we always like to have a session or, or a part of this stream where we like, okay, which is which or who is better? What do you prefer? And then eventually get the chat involved and say, what do you guys say? Who wins? And then let that be. And then we duke it out on the stream. So hopefully that'll become uh, more developed as we go along. So far, we haven't been too successful getting the chat involved, but we haven't had much of a chat. So Hopefully as we go, yeah. Yes, Amanda V, as discussions should be. <laughs> yes. But there's good love there. We all love each other. Uh, we have a great time. Kevin and I get along great. And uh, even though he makes me mad sometimes, you know, that's just the way friendships go. So um, if he's watching, he's probably laughing at me right now. But um, anyway, I hope to see you all soon. I'm sure I'll see you guys on some of the uh, streams, uh, Bancroft, whatever. We'll see you around. I do appreciate y'all coming on and um, yeah, come back next week. Thank you guys very much. I will see you soon.